Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about sonic sound fields. We're going to talk about one room with three major parts, and let's talk about that. Room dimensions produce distortion. I think we all realize that, that certain dimensions cause certain low frequency problems. Certain dimensions contribute to high reverberation or reflection issues. And we have two types, pressure and reflections. Those are our two main problems in rooms. If you did an outline, you have Roman numeral one, pressure, Roman numeral two, reflections, and then all the subtopics underneath, okay? Pressure is wavelengths that don't fit. A 30 cycle wave is 34 foot long. If you don't have 34 foot dimensions, it's not going to fit. Some will be reflected back into the room, some will go right through the wall, and some will be absorbed if you use the right technology to do it. Reflections, they bounce around everywhere, right? They're short straight line energy, ray energy, that bounces everywhere off the walls. And what does that do? It confuses the direct or straight line energy. So you have all these reflections from the wall surfaces, right? Confusing the straight line direct energy. It's almost like interference. So that's what you have to do. In football, the, the runner is, is to get to the goals. The, the best way for him to do that would be a straight line. He can't do that because there's, you know, defensive players in the way that he has to get around. Well, that's what reflections do. They, they want to go and interfere with that straight line effort. So that's what you have to treat for. We have three sound fields that we have to look at. The floor to ceiling, the sidewall to sidewall, and the front to rear wall. So all of these different dimensions produce different issues. Obviously, the shortest dimension will pr produce the largest low frequency pressure issue. What's the shortest dimension in most rooms? Which sound field? Floor to ceiling. Usually the width and the length are longer than the height, hopefully. Okay, so and that's always misused and misunderstood. People never talk about the floor to ceiling problem, and they're the largest sometimes, most of the time. So must define the frequency and amplitude on each wall surface because it's different. The more energy you put in the room, the more problems you're going to have. Okay, choose the proper rate and level of absorption. I see this all the time. Boxes filled with building insulation won't give you that. Won't get you the low frequency absorption. It can't. The material type inside can't. It's an effort to make something light relatively inexpensive, call it a treatment product, and then you get it and you're not happy because it doesn't get enough or go low enough. Can't. Got to cover enough surface area to reach what we call in physics critical mass. You got to cover so much surface area to have an audible impact across the frequency range. We go through a lot in large room acoustics with this issue. You have to cover a lot of surface area in a large room to manage reverberation times. Because the whole wall is basically a speaker. It's a reflection speaker. And in order to treat it, you gotta put a grill cloth, so to speak, or treatment over it. And you gotta cover the whole surface area. In a lot of cases, and most people aren't willing to do that. Well, then you gotta live with a higher reverb time. Can't do that, well, you're almost, you know, not gonna be able to fix your problem. You're going to have to lower the, the amount of energy you put in the room. Treat enough sur surface area and treat each surface area individually. Treat each surface area as if it's own room. That's the only way you're going to use the proper tactics to complement your strategy. You take a macro level view and use a micro level treatment approach. That'll get the results that you want. If it doesn't, we know where we have to make up the difference because we used a strategy and we used the appropriate tactics. We may have not used enough or whatever the reason. Space availability, budget, there's tons of reasons with human beings on why they do and don't do things. But the room doesn't really care about any of that. The room only sees energy. And with the room, physics is the law. Everything else is a suggestion. So you gotta have enough coverage to reach critical mass in order to have that audible impact. 
Three, sonic sound fields within your room. Keep those in mind when you're developing your strategy. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.